everyone, Eric and Eric here uh, in front of Budweiser Gardens here in London, Ontario. Going to be checking out Smashing Pumpkins this evening. Uh, we're about to go inside in a few minutes uh, before the band does sound check and I interviewed Jeff Schroeder, the guitarist, and we're looking forward to it. So, uh, you excited about today? Yes, yes, I am. It should be a fun day. And uh, Junior here himself is actually conducting the interview, so it, uh, it'll be pretty cool. Are you excited about your first big interview? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a beautiful day here, like we say. We're going to get a hold of the tour manager now, and we are going to head in and uh, go, uh, go have some fun. Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Hey, everyone. Eric Jr. here with Jeff Schroeder, the guitarist for Smashing Pumpkins. Jeff, yeah. how are you? Doing great. Enjoying my time in Canada. Always love it here. Very happy to be here. Pretty. Actually, this is my first time in uh, London, Ontario. Um, but for me, honestly, it, it's great because I'm a hockey fanatic. So being able to go to all these kind of famous um, hockey arenas is great just to see all the photos and whatnot. And teams tend to be very generous. So I've gotten a, a jersey in just about every, every arena. So I'm, I'm happy. No complaints. Could you introduce me to Drew? Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Drew. I'm taking care of Jeff's guitars out here and his amps. So yeah, I'll, t I'll take you through some of the guitars here real quick. Uh, we'll start with the acoustics. Um, this is the 50th anniversary uh, Yamaha. Uh, it sounds incredible. Um, right now, this is this is the the backup for this one. Yeah, and I was gonna say also with these um, these are the because they're friends of EVH TV Fu Tone uh, Brass Bridge Pins, which I have on most mics. Actually, though, I don't have them on the 12 string because actually I just forgot to tell Adam I needed them, but. Um, so I have these installed on almost all my acoustics. I, I, I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's a subtle difference. I think it's actually a fairly significant difference. I mean, in not only tone, but I also, maybe it's mental, but I also feel like you get that little bit more sustain. Yeah, I too. think the attack off of yeah. these, having the, having the brass in there, it, it definitely has a yeah. sharper attack. So I, I actually have these on my own guitars at home as well. Yeah. So I came out here and yeah. saw them. But, but this, is a, this is a great guitar. This, I yeah. this guitar. This is yeah. a yeah. It sounds great. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Is the brown top? This guy is that uh, what the LS16 small body. Um, it's really comfortable to play. Same same pins on this yeah. one. Um, this has 12 to 54 Ernie balls on it. Um, tuned to standard and uh, capo on second fret. Um, but this guitar, I mean, it cuts really well through the mix and then. Uh, it plays great, so. Yeah, and the interesting thing about all the Yamahas that we use is a completely passive pickup system. So I don't do any EQ or anything off the guitar, and they sound uh, naturally, actually sound really good. Um, but I think that's good because what I'm hearing and what our front of house sound in these here are kind of two different things. Right. And the less that I mess with it gives him actually more um, flexibility, but it still sounds pleasant enough for me to play. So this guitar here is the 720. It's got the Bigsby on it. Um, this guitar is 100% stock. Uh, the only thing I did on it was I rounded the fret ends, um, kind of like the, the Japanese custom ones, um, so it played and felt the same on the sides. But it has a fatter neck than um, most of the Rev Stars do. Um, this one kind of came out perfectly balanced and uh, plays great. So um, this one um, standard. So it's it's got Ernie Ball tens on there, the slinkies. Um, but yeah, every, everything on this guitar, I, I guess it used to be mine, and I gifted it to Jeff. Because <laughs> it, it was sounding better in the set, I thought, than, than uh, the hollow body was. It, it might have had a little bit brighter attack or whatever, and it gave him the option of the trim. So. Yeah, this is actually my first Bigsby. I've never never been a big fan of the Bigsby, um, but on this guitar, I love it. And I, as he tell you, I, every night I'm using it more and more as I kind of figure out actually how to use it. But yeah, it's great. great yeah, it's weird because it's the Bigsby on this one is it doesn't have the full fulcrum of a normal yes. one because it's a flat top, not an arch top. Yeah. You get a little bit less motion range, but mm -hmm. it does work just as well. So, yeah. yeah. This guitar here is the RSP20. Um, this one has the rail hammers in there uh, to give it a little bit uh, tighter low end. This one's uh, dropsy sharp. Um, and it ha I left the wiring the same, so it does the uh, thin thins it out with the cap. But um, I forget what they actually call that. They call they have, they have a name for it, but I'm not sure the um, the name. Oh, from be, Yamaha, yeah. Yeah, but, but it basically it cuts some low end out. It's like a low end it cuts low end out. It's not. It doesn't split the coils. It actually just like I said, 
it gives a, a single coil like sound without splitting them. And no noise. Yeah. So you can use, you don't have to have yeah. any, you could use P94s in there and still have a thinner P94. So it doesn't change the humbuckers at all. And it's cool, these rail hammers, I mean, these are, I think, the hyper vintage, and they're pretty hot still. I mean, they're, yeah, but, they're really hot. Yeah, um, but I really like, because they're hot, but they have a lot of clarity still, and for most of this stuff that we're, and I'm using this guitar in E flat with a drop E, so it's drop C sharp, so anything you can get that extra clarity when you're down that low, I think is helpful. And yeah. Yeah. This guitar, pretty much every fret is used. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's for Porcelina. It's a 15-minute song, so 15-minute jam session. Yeah, on it this is one. true. And we're like all the way up to all the way down. If so. it had another fret, we would use it. That's for sure. Yeah. It's bending this one all the way up is far farther than I can bend it. That's for sure. So, yeah, it's <laughs> pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. This guitar, um, it's a little bit thicker than. Uh, most of the Rev Stars, but um, and it has glow in the dark inlays here, cool little feature. But um, rail hammers as well. Yeah, hyper vintage. Yeah, hyper vintage. Um, it had two switches in there. Um, this one's a coil tap, and then this one was a kill switch. But to do certain songs, he wanted a button, so we just put a button in there. And this is it was completely custom made in the Yamaha Custom Shop in California, and um, it's mostly mahogany. I think it's actually a rosewood thing, but, um, but it has the maple top, and um, I kind of color-wise and stuff, I I kind of want to go for that Randy Rose like type of color scheme. And different, I think, than most production red stars of this uh, nature is that I think only one of the, like the lower end models of red star actually comes with the tunematic ridge, but I wanted to have yeah the four hundred series yeah and stuff. the tunematic. Um, I think it's more of like a feel thing for me, and I think it actually sounds different too. Um, but the neck on this, the neck profile is great, and actually, they had sent it. This one's been flexed. Is it the guy in San Francisco? Brower. Probably Brower guitar, yeah. Who does all the Satriani's guitars in San Francisco, and it's, I mean, it's amazing. It's, it feels great. And this has the jumbo frets on there, so it's a, uh, it's a lot easier and, to you play know, than most guitars. From the like the regular restaurant, it's actually. The neck is set in just one fret farther than a normal one, so it's brought in so it actually balances more like I wanted it to, because I was wanting it to balance slightly different, and so they actually built it like so. If you, it's really hard to tell, but it actually goes in one fret farther, yeah. the way it connects to the body. So it's pretty cool. It sounds amazing. It's a great sounding guitar. It, I like the yeah. Of that too. It is yeah. Yeah. It is a, it, and the color it, just keeps getting a little a, bit. This is cool. This is magnets. magnetic. So. Easy to get in there. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Pickups easy. has been easy on this yeah. one all the time. So yeah, yeah. So Jeff, I understand you're a big Eddie Van Halen fan. Um, so have you used your Wolfgang on the tour at all? Not yet, but we are going to be in Chicago in a couple of days. So I actually <laughs> could bring it back out, which wouldn't be necessarily be a bad idea. Right, right. Could actually come in useful. It's, it it is honestly it's a great guitar. So um, and I've used it a lot in the past. I just you know, it wasn't that I didn't think about using it. It was just that once rehearsals started, it were, uh, you know, I was trying out a lot of the newer Yamaha stuff, and then we just kind of started found our arsenal and never really got into like what we used in the past too much. I'm actually using a lot of guitars I've never used on tour before, um, so that's the only reason. It has nothing to do with that. That's a wonderful guitar. Love it. Kind of looking forward to the Floyd as well, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're going as far as we can with the trim systems we have, but uh, they're buckling out, and we need just a little bit more. So yeah. I think I think that's the way to go. So. I think that's yeah the next <laughs> the next destination. We'll be hanging it like this on the on the trim. I do. Sure. I have been doing. I've just I've, I mean, I know I know <laughs> one night it's gonna just come out completely. Yeah, yeah here's a close up of my rig. Um, Everything here is redundant, so meaning there's the main and the backup, so it's not like I'm using two helixes um, during the show. I'm just using one, but the helix really is the heart of the rig, and basically my signal path, I you know, up on stage I have a wah pedal, but after the wah, basically come in here, and then um, my preamp, which is kind of modified Randall RM4 with Salvation Audio, uh, modded preamps is in one of the loops of the helix and then it goes into this again salvation audio modded um, power amp 
to just one 4x12 cabinet in orange with um, Celestion speakers. Um, but all the effects and everything that I'm using are primarily from Helix. We do have a small drawer with a few things with the Eventide H9, uh, Electro Harmonic Synth 9, and the Digitech Freakout, and this um, Mercury 4 by um, Spaceman effects out of Portland. But I, I mean, most of what I'm doing all night is just comes from Helix. And, and Helix really is like the organizing principle of the rig, and that, um, you know, every song has its own preset within a series of snapshots. And actually, the snapshot feature of Helix really is kind of a life changing thing for me as a live player to be able to. It, it cuts down programming so much because. Most of the time, I don't need a completely different sound. I just want, like, oh, I want to turn up the mix, or I want to turn up the modulation, or I want to turn up the gain of the drive pedal um, on, like, the chorus or something of a song. So being able to do that without having to completely start a whole new preset, I mean, it's really great. And just once you realize, like, the kind of that type of flexibility, I mean, sky's the limit as far as what, what you can do. Um, every day, I think, I mean, Drew, I think he does, he runs a backup right before the show because usually at Soundcheck or whatnot, we'll make a few changes. And so we always have, we can always revert back. And I think he, he, you save every backup. So we could go back like, you know what? Like we've gone the wrong direction. We could go back 10 shows and return. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's really wonderful. Because maybe one night is magic for some reason. That was so different. Yeah. And also, it's it's so it's so great just that it, when we play a different set, if we go off and do a different show, I can just email him the new set list. I show up to sound check and it's programmed in my board. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah. So now here you can see actually what I have on stage, which is actually not that much. I mean, my guitar goes into the Dunlop Joe Bonham Asawa, um, which is, in my opinion, one of the best sounding wahs out there. It's he really, just the tonal quality of it is fantastic. Then I go into a Tone Freak Buff Puff Buffer because it is a pretty long cable run from here to the rig. So that just kind of keeps the integrity of the signal. So once my guitar it hits Helix, it's like kind of replicates as much as possible would it be like going straight in. And then out here we just have just the controller. It just, doesn't make any sound or anything it just actually controls the rack and I have two expression pedals which I'm only really using as a volume pedal I'm not really doing much else um, but as you can see so I'm just using the, the the controller I have the presets on the top row and then the snapshots on the bottom row so for like for example the first song rocket um, when it comes out let me see um, like the this is like the main rhythm sound. This is like an octaver. This is like a short lead. And then this is just a clean patch. So those, and that's how I just go through every song. And then like on Shiva, again, that's just a clean sound. This is my ma main rhythm. This is main rhythm with, uh, with an overdrive pedal. And this is my lead sound. So for example, something like in my lead sound, when you open up and see the pedals, you see I have the Minotaur, the Klon, basically copy, and the transistor tape delay. And this is, the Minotaur is actually running before my preamp, and then the, tr the transistor tape is actually running post. And then I think you actually, and then we're also using Helix to kind of boost the overall output of that lead tone by about 2 dB. So it's, I mean, you can see it's really great to be able to do all this kind of stuff. and. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I really honestly couldn't be happier with it. I'm not, I mean, I'm really using it in a very basic way. I can even do so much more. And so I'm actually excited about, like, continue to grow within it. So all the new firmware updates, it's, it's great. So, Jeff and Drew, thank you so much for, for answering our questions. And we'll look forward to seeing your show tonight. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you.